Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome to lesson number 6 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to focus on something you'll be using over and over again in pretty much any JavaScript project, the JavaScript variable. If you enjoy the content and find it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 6. So now that we've got most of the theory and basics out of the way, in this lesson let's learn all about JavaScript variables. So first of all, variables are basically custom words that we can use to store or assign data to. We can then use these words whenever we want to refer to that data. One thing to keep in mind with variables is that we can change the values once they've been assigned. To create a variable in JavaScript, we need to first tell the browser that we want to declare a variable by using the built-in JavaScript keyword let. We then need to provide a name for our variable. So here I'm going to say let space and now we need to name our variable. So I'm going to go for channel name. Now notice here I'm using camel case, where the first word is in all lowercase, and then every subsequent word starts with a capital letter. And this is officially known as declaring a variable. In other words, we've now created this variable, and it's ready for us to use and store some information in. To do that, we first need to type the variable name. So down here on new line, I'm going to say channel name. And then we use the equal symbol to assign a value to this variable. Now, just a quick note here. This symbol in JavaScript is actually called the assignment operator because its job is to assign values to variables. The reason why it's not called equals is because JavaScript uses double equals as an equal symbol. And this will become more apparent and make more sense when we look at comparisons in JavaScript. For now, just know that this is called the assignment operator. So let's go ahead and assign a value to our channel name variable. And here I'm going to say dev dreamer. So now the variable channel name holds the value that we've assigned to it of dev dreamer. To test this, let's go ahead and console log our variable name and let's see what we get. So let's say console.log channel name. Perfect, as you can see, we get the value dev dreamer. And this is known as initializing a variable. So this here is declaring a variable, and now we've actually initialized that variable with a value. Now, although it's perfectly fine to declare our variable first and then initialize it like we've done here, we can actually declare and initialize all in one go on the same line. And this is the same thing as before, except now it's all in a single statement on one line. Now you can also do this for multiple variables on the same line. So we can say, let game title, we assign the value Sonic, and then comma, so these will all be comma separated, game platform, we assign the value of Sega, and then finally game year, we assign the value of 1991. Now notice here, we've only used the let keyword once. When we declare multiple variables on the same line, we don't need to keep writing the word let. We can just write it once at the beginning and then separate our variable names with their values using commas. And again, this is completely fine. However, it's not great for readability. As you can see, it's kind of hard to read. We can put these on single lines so it's a bit clearer. Putting our variables on separate lines like this makes them much easier to read. Also, notice that we are using the let keyword for each new statement and ending each statement with a semicolon. So that's how to declare and initialize JavaScript variables. Let's now take a look at a few other things that are important to keep in mind when creating variables. First of all, as mentioned earlier, we can change the values of variables. However, it's very important to note that when doing so, we don't redeclare the variable itself with the let keyword. To make sense of this, let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here I'm going to create a new variable called first name. And let's set this to Matthew. And let's just imagine we've got a bunch of code after this. And now we want to change that variable to something else. So this is what you shouldn't do. Let first name be assigned the value John. Okay, this would actually be wrong because there's no need to redeclare the variable name. We've already done that up here. We've already said let first name. Okay, so this would be the incorrect way of doing things. What we should be doing is just simply saying first name and then let's assign the value of John. And just to show you this works, let's go ahead and console.log this. And as you can see, we get John in the console. So remember, whenever we want to update a variable, what we don't want to do is redeclare the variable again. Once we've already done that the first time, there's no need to redeclare the variable name again. Now, when it comes to naming our variables, it's important to note that we choose names that make sense. If you want to create a variable to store a username into, it's no good calling the variable x. It makes more sense to call the variable, well, username. In other words, the name should be meaningful and reflect the variable or function value. Also, when naming our variables, we're not completely free to call it whatever we want. There are three main limitations on naming variables. 
The first is that the variable name must contain only letters, numbers, or the symbols dollar sign and underscore. Secondly, the first character must not be a number and there should be no spaces in our variable name. And finally, number three, the variable name must not be a reserved keyword in the JavaScript language. I'll leave a link in the description box below to the MDN docs with a list of reserved keywords in JavaScript. Again, we can't use these as variable names. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of what we can and cannot use. So of course we can say let name be assigned the value Amit, that's completely fine. We can also use dollar sign, so we can say let dollar sign name. And remember, we can also use numbers, so we can say let name one, two, three equal Amit. What we can't do is we can't say let one, two, three name. Remember, we can't start variable names with numbers. As you can see here, VS Code is giving us an error. And we can't say something like let my hyphen name equal Amit. Again, we can't use the hyphen. The only symbols we can use are the dollar sign and the underscore. Another thing to know is that variable names are case sensitive. And so the following variable names would not be the same. So we can say let fave color. Again, here we're using camel case and set the value to red. And then let's create another variable name called let fave color and set this value to blue. So although they're both called fave color, as variables are case sensitive, these variables would not be the same. The browser would recognize them as two different variables. Now, another thing I want to briefly mention is the var keyword. Var is short for variable. In older scripts, you might come across the keyword var instead of let. So for example, you might see something like var age equals 18. Now var was actually the old way of creating a variable. There are some slight differences between the var and the let keywords, and let was actually created to solve some of the problems of the var keyword. We will dedicate a future lesson to this, and for now, we'll continue to use the modern way of let to declare our variables. Finally, let's discuss another variable keyword called const. Const is short for constant. It's known as an unchanging variable, hence the name const. So whilst the variables declared with let can be changed, as we've seen, variables declared with const cannot be changed. Trying to do so will cause an error. And so that's what the const keyword is for. It's used to store variable names that we know will never change. Let's take a look at an example. So here I'm going to say const, so just like before, but this time we're saying const instead of let. And the variable name is going to be called our planet. And here we're going to assign the value of Earth. Let's go ahead and console.log this. Okay, so we get Earth in the console. Now, if we try to change the value of this variable, so let's go ahead and say our planet equals, let's go for Jupiter. As you can see here, the console throws an error because we cannot change the value of a const variable. So we use const when we are sure that a variable name will not change. Trying to change it will cause an error. Okay, so to summarize this lesson then, variables are custom words or containers that we use to store data in. We can then use these variables to refer to the data that we've stored in them. When naming variables, remember the following three points. Number one, the variable name must contain only letters, numbers, or the symbols dollar sign and underscore. Secondly, the first character must not be a number and there should be no spaces in our variable name. And finally, the variable name must not be a reserve keyword in the JavaScript language. Again, I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. Also remember, variable names are case sensitive. So for example, fave color written like this is not the same as fave color written like this. And finally, we can use the const keyword to declare an unchanging variable. That is to say a value that we cannot change. Okay, so let's now practice what we've learned by doing some tasks. So here are your tasks in for this lesson. First of all, I want you to create a variable called fave food and assign the value pizza to it. Another variable called fave color with the value red. And then a third variable called fave drink with the value lemonade. Your second task is to console log the fave drink variable to show its value. Task number three is to change the value of the fave food variable from pizza to pasta, or go ahead and put your own favorite food in. And then I want you to console log that value. And finally, for task number four, I want you to create a variable, call it whatever you want, and assign the value of your birthday. So for example, you could call it my birthday, and then assign the value of your birthday. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try this out, and when you come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how did you do then? Did you find it easy? Find it hard? Let's have a look. Okay, so task one then. So let's go ahead and say, let fave food, be assign the value of pizza, fave color, red and fave drink lemonade perfect so now we've got our three variables so task two is to console log the fave drink variable to show its value so then here we can say console.log and fave drink 
Okay, so in the console here we get lemonade. Task three was to change the value of the fey food variable. So let's say fey food, be assigned the value of pasta. Remember, we don't need to redeclare the fey food variable by using the keyword let. We've already done that up here. Okay, let's go ahead and console log this value. Perfect, we get pasta. And then for the final task, I want you to create a variable, call it whatever you want, and then assign the value of your birthday. So here, we're going to be creating a variable that we know will never change. So we're going to say const, and then let's call this my birthday. And then here, let's assign the value of my birthday. Okay, so if you got all those right then, well done. Not to worry too much if you didn't get them all right. The best thing to do is to rewatch the video again, especially the parts that you didn't get right. Okay, so that's it for this lesson, guys. In the next lesson, we're going to be learning all about JavaScript data types. It's going to be a very, very important lesson because that lesson is going to be a springboard for pretty much the vast majority of the rest of this series. So guys, make sure to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.